Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Today we'll be going through the cloud adoption journey and the trials and triumphs that come along with it. So no matter where you are on that cloud journey, if you're starting with a few SaaS applications such as O365, or if you're already on your way from migrating from your on-premise data center to a cloud provider. Our goal is to provide some insights into from our experience and give you some key takeaways. To introduce ourselves, my name is Tally Gullickson. I'm a senior business analyst with Cirrus. And I'm Bruce Yantz, Director of Infrastructure Services. And to introduce Cirrus, we're an IT solutions company based in West Des Moines, but have clients all around the Midwest. We've been in business for about 34 years and have continued to expand into new technology areas. We have many practice areas. Our primary focus is cloud adoption. And within that cloud adoption practice area, we have many employees certified in Oracle Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and AWS to provide our clients a, a wide variety of tools and solutions for them. So why does cloud make sense? We like to think of cloud of more than an IT project. It's a business enabler. Organizations today are being challenged to meet new user demands and to keep up with a rapidly changing world and cloud enables those goals. So with a new idea, it can be launched faster with an agile approach to spin up a POC on a server and use a variety of technologies to meet those needs. So you can test out a POC, have users try it, and then when more user demand shows up, it can scale to that size. So it's very flexible to each idea and only costs what you need to use. So you're not paying up front for a big server, you're just using exactly what you need. And underlying it all is always up to date security. So you don't have to worry about patching and maintenance. All those day to day operations become less and so that your IT team can now focus on the bigger picture items and more strategic initiatives. So all of these together creates a very innovative space for companies to expand into. With all these great benefits, companies are pushing towards the cloud, which is great. There's always a but. From our experience in research, some of the main reasons why cloud projects fail include the lack of support and enablement, the lack of strategy and planning, the lack of expertise and skills, and the lack of time and investment. These challenges can be caused for decision makers to think twice about a cloud adoption project, but we don't think that's the case. So what do we do? We'll expand on these challenges and provide ways to overcome them with one of our customer success stories. To give some background on our customer, they're a state utility company. They were facing issues with their core business application that was at risk for failures. So there are some system failures that were at play, um, overall performance issues with the application. They were seeing some security risks um, because of lack of patching and lack of security updates because the product stack was old and no longer supported. On top of all of that, there was a costly hosted on-premise environment with uh, poor service from the hosting provider. So all these factors created an urgency for change for the organization. And Bruce will walk through how we help them overcome these common pitfalls of a cloud migration. In order for cloud projects to succeed, there really needs to be support and enablement from the executive level down to the technical staff and everyone in between. We've seen that projects can stall or even completely stop if this isn't in place. Also, there should be champions from all parts of the organization, business, PMO, operations, marketing, all of the stakeholders and people impacted by a cloud migration that would be interested in being a part of it and making sure it's a success. The final piece of getting the right support in place is developing a cloud enablement team. This team is comprised of executive sponsors, the technical team that really understands the technology behind the cloud, product implemented, as well as potentially a partner that will be that 
best practice expert for the team to help provide overall guidance for the cloud journey. This is one path that we see for most large organizations to begin. There are some cases where smaller organizations may begin with a strategy, then come back to the support enablement piece. But this is the normal route that we typically see organizations go. Gardner stated that success really depends on having support and sponsorship all across the organization through different means, whether it's business, legal, there's a bunch of different areas that need to be able to provide that support because IT alone cannot make sure it all succeeds. Looking at our customer success story, Xerus brought multiple options to the customer to review. Some were on-premise based and then we provided a cloud option. We worked with the leadership team to understand all of the components of each of the options and they agreed that cloud was the most strategic move for them. It would help them reduce their overall costs, provide more reliability, and overall provide less risk in their environment. We then reviewed the plan with the team to help them gain confidence in the overall migration. We also worked side by side, providing them guidance through this process and helping through decisions that need to be made, additional details that need to be understood, and any concerns that came up. Overall, the customer relied heavily on a partner to be able to make this a success. So now that your leadership is on board, what do you do now? Well, to find the answer to that, you really want to understand what your business goals and priorities are and review them in detail. You want to have a firm grasp on the applications and infrastructure, as well as a lot of the detail that goes into that to really be able to help shape the cloud journey and approach. Once you have all these details gathered together, it's time to put together the roadmap and strategy that will be critical to the success of the overall project. And this needs to include the overall migration plan, as well as ongoing support and continuing to keep the strategy up to date. The last component is developing a detailed plan with digestible phases that can be broken up to have small successes throughout the project to ensure the project remains on schedule. Gartner stated, by 2022, 70% of organizations will have a strategy in place, and hopefully everyone listening to this call will be in that boat. However, this means that 30% will probably fail because they won't have a strategy in place. So looking back at our customer success, Xerus worked closely with the client to understand their goals and priorities. We sat down and reviewed them deeply with them so we had a very good understanding of how they impact their business. Then we did a thorough analysis to understand their overall inventory of applications and infrastructure, did a review of their architecture, looking at what security risks they had in place, and also reviewing past outages that took place overall to get a good picture of the current state. We then worked together to provide two options to the customer, both being long-term and strategic in order to meet their business objectives. We work closely with the leadership team to then come up with a answer to which cloud option to move forward with and built a detailed plan that was made up of milestones throughout the project so that we continue to measure the success of the project and ensuring it's on time. We continue to work closely with this customer to review the strategy on a regular basis to ensure as cloud technology changes and their business changes that they're on track. Another major component to success of cloud is making sure the right technology is implemented to meet the business goals and objectives. This also means that there's a specific level of expertise and skills needed to be successful. So it's really important for you to evaluate your skills as well as the experience needed for this to be successful and understand where you might have gaps in your skill set or expertise. Once you understand what those gaps are, you really want to understand how are you going to fill those gaps. Is it going to be cross-training existing staff members or hiring someone new with the right skill set or working with a partner that is very experienced with cloud technology that can be your best practice experts throughout this journey? It's also important to understand there's a differentiation between 
the skills needed to complete the migration, as well as the ongoing support after the migration is complete. Many customers look to manage service providers to provide this ongoing daily support so that the business doesn't have to deal with the operational task, but can focus on business growth objectives. O'Reilly completed a survey of 590 participants that were made up of subject matter experts, as well as execs all across the world. Through this study, they discovered that a lot of these organizations, exactly 50% of them, acknowledge that they have a lack of the correct skills to be able to adopt cloud. So looking back at our customer that we worked with closely, we understood their environment very deeply and in the end realized they're running all Oracle products. So the right answer was running everything on Oracle Cloud and it provided them an option to meet their business goals and provide them additional growth down the road. Once this was done, we looked to install all of the latest products as well as patches and continue to build a plan around those patches so that they stay up to date and don't end up in, a, in having security issues again down the road. The implementation was completed parallel with their existing environment staying as intact to avoid impact to the business so that they can continue to operate as normal while the migration took place. Again, the customer acknowledged that they didn't have the right staff and skills, so they leveraged a partner to be able to develop the strategy, a detailed plan, the implementation, as well as the migration. And Xeris continues to be their long-term support provider on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can focus on the business initi initiatives. As you can tell, cloud is a sizable undertaking. It's really important to know the time commitment and the cost investment before jumping in. It's critical to dedicate the right resources so that you have a successful migration in the end. You want to be able to balance the day-to-day -day workload as well as the migration work in tandem to make sure that there are no impacts to the overall project. The earliest you get a partner involved, the better, because it will help you save time and understand the overall timeline, understand your costs in detail, and overall be able to make sure you can have measurements to all of that and have someone accountable. As we all know, priorities can change at any moment, so the more you have built out on your project for success, the better chance it has to survive. A survey completed a few years ago showed that 96% of companies that were moving to the cloud acknowledged that it took more money and time than they had expected. Looking back at our customer, once they approved the approach, we provided a very detailed timeline and all of the cost estimates so that the leadership team could review and understand everything so that they can budget appropriately. Again, as I mentioned, the client lacked the correct staff and skills, so they really decided they needed a partner in order to make this complete project a success. They were able to save $40,000 per year with this solution over their hosted model. This enabled the client to be able to focus more on their business initiatives and objectives while the partner completed the migration overall to have less impact on the business. So how do we get started? First, get the leadership in a cloud mindset. Without their support, cloud projects fail to take off. So getting their support right away from the beginning is an important way to leverage and get the migration started. Next, you can start your internal cloud enablement team. Now this team should be resources from different parts of the company. It can be technical people, business people, all those different opinions matter when it comes to making decisions about the cloud. You wanna make sure that those decisions start with a solid foundation and that cloud enablement team is that foundation. Next, you can check out cloud training opportunities. Many cloud providers have a library of training available to users and potential users to learn how the technology works. So your IT team can get started learning how the technology works and your business can understand how it's gonna impact their operations. Next, create an inventory of the applications that are currently in your data center. Getting that clear picture of what's currently there 
gives you an idea of how the migration will work. Once you know those interdependencies and groupings, it can help make that migration a much more smooth transition. And lastly, if you need help in any areas, reach out to an experienced partner. We've worked with clients with our Catalyst program to get them started thinking about cloud, getting them set with a cloud strategy and cloud roadmap by analyzing their business goals and objectives and matching that to their current inventory. So we help them with all those aspects to create a detailed roadmap broken out into phases to help them migrate successfully. If you need more reference materials, you can visit xeris.com slash cloud resources for even more insight. We have blog posts and white papers about our cloud process, and we have case studies about our successful clients, and then also our white paper on our Catalyst process. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us. Our contact information is on the screen. Thank you so much for joining.